What is up, everyone? Phil here, and welcome to the Daily Wrap for what was Saturday, the 20th of July, 2024. Uh, if you haven't been around this week, you have been missing out on a pretty incredible streak of streams. Yesterday, I had my best ever gameplay in Street Fighter VI, hitting a new high rank, uh, getting crazy win streaks, and great gameplay in Master. Today, I beat not one, but two different games one of which being known as one of the hardest games of all time without having to essentially cheat or use a crutch to do so. Let's talk about what today's streams were because it was a pretty awesome and epic day. So first off, Level 1 Podcast today had a lot to talk about. My best day ever of Street Fighter VI, um, some game news, <clears throat> including an update on the entire Assassin's Creed Shadows debacle and the story of that Yasuke character who's going to be one of the main characters of the game and how apparently... It's not historically accurate at all. Everyone lied. There's a big controversy around it. Pretty interesting. Uh, and some uni unionization over at Bethesda. Uh, plus some chill Q&A and the usual stuff that we do on the Level 1 podcast. Then, we jumped into Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree. And basically, continuing from what I did last time, which was trying to make this bleed build, I tried to basically make it work fully because last time I guess I hadn't. I kind of like half built it but didn't really finish it. So I did actually finish it and started using this giant weapon from the DLC, which is this severed arm of one of the blood creatures, the blood fiends, uh, to try to cast bleed onto the final boss of the DLC. Um, we did this for about, uh, about an hour and I was getting better and better. And then the, the, the suggestion was made why don't I try to get uh, a tier for my flask that will actually allow me to, to do even more stun? Because with this weapon, after hitting three, four times in a row, I could actually stun the final boss. Um, of course, that's an or ordeal to do because you need to do that without taking so much damage you die or getting interrupted or stunned yourself. <clears throat> so, basically, it, it took about two hours. And after two hours of practicing, I had the entire first form of the final boss way handled like basically when he's attacking i would go hit dodge hit sometimes even hit twice in a row don't care tank out the hit and after you hit him three times in a row he would stun boom hit him with a with a visceral attack and then the bleed build up hits giant damage and i would just keep doing that and basically what happened is i started getting through his first form within 60 seconds so i could get to the second form and actually start learning the second form way more easily and the second form is a mother all right, but basically I started learning how to dodge some of the tougher attacks, right? The giant area of effect holy attack, this diving uh, multi-clone attack that he does. And after figuring out certain ways to roll around and get hits in, I re realized really the best way to fight this boss is to be very offensive. Every once in a while dodging and healing, but mostly you want to go for keep hitting him and trying to stagger and stun him and then getting the bleed build up. So it took about two and a half hours. We got it done. I'm not going to tell you exactly how we did it because it actually everything kind of came together. And so that clocks in at around roughly five hours or so of attempts on the final boss. Actually less time than it took me to beat Melania. Melania took me around six plus hours. This only took me maybe around five. Okay. So we got it done. And then with time to spare, we went and we looked at the remembrance, to see, you know, and some of the items you can get from the remembrance. And then we went and finished up the, the plot line, which was at the St. Trina area. It's actually the end of the plot of the DLC. And then we went and beat the game. And what I mean by that is I went back, I fought Radagon, and I fought the Elden Beast, which now you can do the Elden Beast fight on Torrent, which was awesome. It was a way cooler fight in that regard. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we did it, completed it, 100% done. Got a new ending I had never gotten. I actually went for the Ronnie ending this time. Um, so I got a gold trophy for beating it and getting the new ending. And that's it. Stick a fork in it. Elden Ring is officially done. I've done two runs of it. I've done the Shadow of the Erd Tree with tons of different builds that we did and weapons. That's it for now. Maybe we would go back to it in the future and, and do another run with more weapons and respecking. But for now, I'm, that's it for Elden Ring. And I mean, that was the final piece of challenge content. So that's it. We've done everything and uh, great run. I hope you enjoy the end of it. Okay. <clears throat> so we got that done. And a lot of people said I wasn't going to be able to do it. They thought that it was going to be too hard. No, no. And by the way, because people are asking me, what do I think is harder? I actually think Melania was a little harder. I'll explain the details of that tomorrow on the podcast, okay? 
Then tonight, it was Riven Remake, and there was the conclusion of that. And uh, we basically had just enough time to wrap it up. The thing that was tricky about Riven Remake tonight was there was a couple of puzzles that were kind of cryptic and hard to figure out, like what you were supposed to do. Um, the game wasn't prompting the finger to touch stuff in some parts. I had to ma like hold and mash right trigger to get the finger to show up, which it should have been on the screen, and it wasn't. It's a little weird. Um, the final puzzle of the game was very challenging. We had to do this codex puzzle and basically solve the codex for yourself, which I actually did on the fly. It, I actually, I guess I'm smarter than I thought. And uh, and then that was it. And the thing is, the ending was a little confusing. And people were like, no, you actually got the best ending. There's two other endings that are worse than what you got. You did the better one. So it was a great experience. I had a great fun with Riven Remake. Really cool to, to replay it with modern 3D graphics and everything rather than just be point and click. Uh, pre-rendered scenes <clears throat> and uh, i was really happy to do it uh, i wonder if they'll ever remake the others because apparently there are two more games in the mist series not made by these same people but i guess mist got bought out so this new company made like two more of them i don't know what they're called but um you know maybe i would consider playing those as well in the future if they get remade but great experience i was happy to do this four years after having played the original mist the mini pc wow just think about the mini pc how well it's coming into use this year right so so far We've got Riven Remake, we got Stardew Valley, we played Hades, we played Noita. We've probably got some other stuff that'll be coming up too, that'll all be different, which is really neat to have new stuff that I now have access to on this mini PC. I mean, hell, I'm really hoping the Marvel vs. Capcom collection will run on this thing, and I'll be able to play it online with the, you know, the most players. So, yeah, this mini PC this year... 2024, this thing has really been getting a lot of use in the last few months, and that's excellent. It's really opening us up to new content, right? Really cool. So, check it out and get caught up on all the stuff. Particularly, you'll probably really like the end of Elden Ring, how it ended there. Um, and uh, thank you for supporting, and a great streaming day today. So, best Street Fighter VI is streaming day ever, followed by me conquering the hardest boss of Elden Ring, and then beating Riven Remake 2. I mean, that's a pretty damn good couple of days of streaming. Now, just to remind you, Sunday is React Day. So tomorrow we break it up. We don't do any gameplay. We'll have a fun, chill podcast here on DSP Gaming in the morning. And then following that, we'll head over to DSP Reacts for my weekly clips react show, DSP versus the Internet. Tomorrow night, this is pretty awesome and epic too. We're finishing my retro react to Dark Souls 1. So we just beat the Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC, and literally the day later, we finished the Dark Souls 1 Retro React. Perfect timing for it. I can't wait to see how it ends because I remember the epic rage quit that I did. It's one of my biggest rage quits of all time. It's going to be super fun to see that with you all tomorrow night on DSP Throwback. So great day of reacting tomorrow. I hope you'll join me. If you're not interested, Monday will be the return of Fallout 4 here on DSP Gaming, continuing on with the Nuka World DLC, which we're getting towards the end of. Monday night will be more Stardew Valley, and I hope people will actually show up and support it this time because we did have a pretty rough slow time last time I played it. Um, and then Tuesday is now up in the air. I don't know what to play on Tuesday because we have openings because I just beat two games. If the Marvel vs. Capcom collection gets announced to be played or to be released, I'll probably do that Tuesday. If not, then we'll see. But we're going to probably start a new game this week if the MVC collection doesn't release, but ahem. I wouldn't be surprised if it does tomorrow because they have it at Evo right now. People are playing it in Las Vegas. It's fully completed. They're running tournaments on it. It's ready to go. I can't imagine why they would wait to sell it. So there you go. Anyway, good stuff. Thank you all for an outstanding streaming day. See you for React Day tomorrow. Have a good night and peace out.